Let's make PS1 environment in Blender. Step one is to just have a basic idea of what you want to create. Start off with basic shapes and just lay them around. For example, create a ground, create some buildings, just get the basic structure started. You don't have to worry about where to begin or stuff like that. Just get the basic shape structure of your uh, scene and then just uh, slowly work from there. Once you have something that you like, go ahead and start adding textures. I will provide the entire uh, uh, project in, linked in the description in my Patreon. If you want to support me, you can find it there. But you can just find stuff with random textures from the internet, such as texture.com or other websites that, that I'll be leaving in the uh, description. You can find textures from there and just then you can just start projecting them onto your uh, yeah, basic structure shape that you created. You don't have to be uh, like very precise or anything. It can be messy or um, a little bit like, you know, weird looking or jaggy looking because that's the main concept of having PS1 style art. You can cut through models and add extra details and uh, edges and spaces to just have that little bit of depth. And also you can use a uh, project from view to easily uh, texture your models if you're having problem with, uh, you know, UV and other stuff like that. It's pretty easy. Models from the PlayStation 1 had very, very low poly count. So try your best to use very low poly models and then like texture them with uh, very low quality textures so that you can you know sort of make them look like uh, they're from ps1 model games or something like that another one of the modeling tricks is that to add images as planes or backgrounds and then slowly model your 3d model on top of that image it actually allows you to like you know sort of create the shape that you need for your textures to fit in and i personally do this a lot i actually do this for the most of the models that i create and it's been pretty helpful over these years of creating 3D models. You also want to make sure of another thing that all the textures and the materials you're using, they have the texture mode uh, set to closest, not linear or anything else. The, uh, setting it to closest will give you that PS1 pixelated texture look and also uh, hand place your objects all over the scene and uh, select particular textures and just modify their uvs a little bit to just get that uh, you know sort of a uh, perfection for your models and stuff i personally do this a lot i uh, don't only use i don't only rely on the uh, project from view i also just you know sort of edit them out a little bit and then you might also want to add those extra small details that make, uh, you know, that might not seem that important, but it is a bit important. You don't want to add too much of it. Don't use anything such as normal maps or anything fancy like that because PS1 obviously can have those things. But like I said, set the uh, textures on the material, set it to closest instead of linear or anything else so that it gives you that pixelated PS1 look. You might also want to downscale the uh, pictures on a editing software such as Photoshop or anything else like that. And that would also give you that uh, uh, low quality, low pixel, pixelated uh, look on your textures. But for me, I'm already using pretty low quality textures and I really don't want to go through that hassle. So I'm not going to be doing that, but you might want to just do that. I also wanted to add a fake light to it. So I actually modeled out the light and added the texture too the uh, light thing and I also need a fake light like thingy with a shader which is relatively easy to set up and I'm gonna just real quick show you how it works it's not that difficult it uses layer weights and gradient textures and you know texture mapping to get it done I extruded the outer parts of it this is gonna be the fake light and okay after a bit of tweaking and adjusting I ended up with a fake looking light thingy Kind of like a light.
instead of using a traditional uh, skybox environment texture, I instead added a sphere and then added a texture that wraps around the sphere. It's pretty simple. You can just do it very easily. And then you can just, you know, make the sphere, you know, big and it will be around all around your screen, uh, all around your scene, acting as a skybox. And actually doing this allows you to add in some effects and stuff. And it also allows you to like, you know, manually control the textures of uh, filtering. And it just overall kind of looks more faithful to the PS1 style of graphics, I think. I also adjusted the sunlight and uh, since the original PS1 didn't really have shadows, I did play around with the settings a little bit just to see if I could achieve something that looked nicer or not. So I just played around with it and decided to leave the shadows off and just added in a basic sunlight just to see how the scene would look. I also went into the color management and changed the uh, gamma and exposure and also set the uh, you know rendering mode, mode from Filmic to raw just to get that uh, you know like the extra colors and stuff like that. You just play around with it, do whatever you want. But for me, I just found something like this would do that actually look much better in terms of visuals. Then I simply created a downscale. A render of my original render set the filter size to something like 0.1 or something like that and then I got this pixelated looking render. I also watched this YouTube video which helped me creating this pixelated looking rendering thing. I'll play around with the resolution a little bit but honestly I think the full HD version looks much better. I already I set the uh, sample filter which is over here and other things and honestly this looks way cleaner and looks overall better. I'll leave the video link in the description uh, in case you want to check it out. Okay, so since Blender doesn't have any way to natively simulate the PS1 generating effect, it was uh, turn, it was a bit difficult to find any uh, proper <clears throat> fixes for it. But I did find a video on YouTube that explained it pretty simply by using a modifier and the global coordinates and some that noise texture and stuff like that to uh, move the, uh, to create the uh, wobbling effect by taking the uh, scenes, uh, you know, global coordinates and applying them to the object. So if the object moves, it will create that wobbling effect. So for this to work in a, a like every separated object, you have to do something like a copy attribute node, like a uh, add-on and stuff like that, which was explained in the original video much easily. But since I'm lazy, I just combined all the objects together and then just added the entire process, entire uh, modifier onto the entire object itself. So that, you know, it just, it's much easier. Then I animated it, like, you know, sort of moving around. I played around with it a bit. And I also, in the end, changed the, uh, you know, the rendering FPS to 24 because it felt much more natural with this kind of scene. And in the end, I ended up with a very good result, and I think it's nice. So I'll I'll be giving that video's link in the description as well, which helped me creating this, you know, PS1 generating thing. And well, that's pretty much it. I ended up creating a pretty decent result. I exported it as a like a video, so that it looks, you know, so that like I don't have to manually go through creating a video with pictures that I got. So this is basically the end of it, and I got something like this in the end, which looks pretty convincing in my opinion. Now this is this definitely wasn't a tutorial, so there wasn't anything to follow along, but I'll be leaving the resources and linked in the description. And if this video was helpful, you can just leave a like, and the project file will be available in the description in my Patreon page. And all the project and the props are separated, and all the textures are also included. So yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.